everybody. Welcome to this edition of Make It With Mod Podge. Today I've got five different really fun spring Easter decor ideas to share with you. My name's Kathy Fillion and I'm going to walk you through all the steps. We're going to make this really cute sign, this hop bunny sign. I'm going to show you all about this wreath that I made just using a styrofoam base from the dollar store. I'm going to show you how to take a paper napkin like this here with these cute carrot designs and we're going to show you how to create these transfers onto our Easter basket. I'm going to talk to you about a couple of our glitter formulas of Mod Podge, the mega glitter and the sparkle and how you can top coat some of your fun spring decor and give it a sparkly look plus show you a quick tip and share an idea on how you can make over some of those paper mache Easter eggs. So let's just dive right in and get started. I've got a few tips to share with you on how you can feather the edge of a napkin using water. So let's get started. Um, first thing you're gonna do for any of these projects is you're going to want to find some napkins that you wanna work with for these designs. Now specifically, we're working with napkins today so you could use paper for these projects, but I'm gonna show you these techniques using paper napkins. So I've got this great paper napkin here that's got these adorable, beautiful uh, carrots on it for our spring season. And you can see that I've transferred those carrots here just onto wood. I got this wood base at the dollar store. I've used that same transfer technique onto the basket, onto the eggs, and onto our cute little wreath there. So the first step is you're going to separate the plies of your napkins. We're only going to work with the top printed ply. So you're going to want to go in and just, oh, you know what? Let me grab a piece of tape. Sometimes this is a good tip. Let's see. If you take a little piece of tape and kind of get it started there, then you can pull back your plies. But I can feel that that's only one ply. So let me get another piece of tape. Let's see if we can get, there we go. We got both plies now. That's really important. Some napkins are three ply and some napkins are two ply. So it's very, you wanna make sure that the napkin looks pretty translucent. If you use um, both plies on there, your project's gonna end up super wrinkly and the Mod Podge is not going to set very well. You're gonna get a lot of bumps in your project. So make sure you take that time to separate your plies. Now, a couple of tips. You can cut around your design, um, and I do that all the time. You can take scissors and just cut out your motif. You would go all the way around it. Now, you can also Mod Podge with the whole napkin, and we've done tons of projects of uh, using that. Today, I really wanted to concentrate on what it's like when you Mod Podge with um, cutout pieces or motifs. So you can cut out your piece. Now, I find that when you Mod Podge this down, sometimes you get a harder edge. So I wanna share with you today a couple of techniques for feathering that edge. So the first one is, I just have a little bowl of water here and a liner brush. You can use any kind of small detail paintbrush or liner brush. Go ahead and get that wet, and then you're gonna go around the image that you want to take out. Let's see, so we're just gonna go around it with the paintbrush and the water. Very, very simple. And then that gives you sort of a tear line. So you'll just go in and tear around the design. And I'm being gentle. We'll just tear that out, just like so. I got a little bit here, so I'll just go ahead and remove some of that. And when you Mod Podge that down with that feathered edge, it really blends a lot more. I'm gonna show you here on this board. So that's a blended feathered edge. All of those were torn there, okay? So that's just a really quick technique on how you do the water and the paintbrush method. Um, I do have some needle nose bottles like this that I use for watercolor and different types of crafts. If you have something like this, or a squirt bottle, you could do that same idea and just go in and sort of squirt a little line around, just like so. The water really creates more of a natural organic tear line. And I'm gonna show you in one second. So it just almost dissolves on the edges. And then I like to set this aside and let it dry. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's dry. It's just kind of 
gives it a little now <laughs> the funny thing is is i do like to re-wet it when i'm going to decoupage with it but i like to cut out a whole bunch of pieces at once so i do all my feathering and my separating at one time and then i do all the mod podging at one time now of course you can do this the old-fashioned way and just tear it with your hands you can just get right in there let's go ahead to the other side where it's not so wet and tear it with your hands when you feather it with the water you have a better chance of not getting that edge cut off so just go around like that you can tear that out but see it's a little harder i'm almost about to go into the design so my preferred method is to either use the paintbrush or the little tiny needle nose bottle so for this one you can see when i tore it i got a little bit off here it's so much faster just to do the water technique and if you're going to do a whole bunch at once i just want to show you this really really great quick way to do it especially with this napkin just go down make a line all the way down like so okay you can tear all the way up your napkin really 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 fast and then you can just repeat that and then go down the side so it's a really really quick way to just prep out your napkins but let's move on let's move on we've got all of our napkins prepped and we're ready to go i want to show you the basket first now this basket came with this kind of yellow whitewash paint on it i loved it um, i did do a test to make sure my napkin was going to still pop through with napkin decoupage you want to have a light colored background so this light yellow is perfect light blues light greens uh, white and ivory work the best but you can see this really shows through so for this design, I just wanted to do it on the slats of the basket. We're gonna use our Mod Podge satin for that today. You could use gloss or matte, whichever you prefer. I like the satin for this project. It's um, not too matte, so it's gonna have a tiny bit of sheen to it, but it's not going to be shiny. So we're gonna go ahead and add that right onto our basket. And it looks milky, but it's gonna dry clear. Just like so. And then we will add our napkin. I've got my carrots cut out here and I have a little spray bottle with some water in it. I'm going to lightly mist it. That will just help with any wrinkles. And then we'll go ahead and place it right onto our little slat there. And I'm gonna tap down with my finger just to get it into position. If you have a wrinkle, you can gently push on it Try not to tear your napkin. It's just a really, really light move, light tap. Then you can go in. I kind of like my brush to be a little bit drier here, so not a lot of Mod Podge on there. You can always go back in once it's dry and add more of a top coat. And we're just gonna gently top coat that down. Now at this point, I like to let that dry a little bit before I go in and do the edges. I wanna show you how you can do those edges. For the edges here, this one's already been drying a little bit. I'm gonna go in, take a little bit more of my Mod Podge, kind of go behind it, and then you'll just take that and tuck it right behind that slat. Now, every basket is a little bit different, so you can use your imagination and your creativity to really do it how you want it. But I just wanna share with you some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. I've got that going towards camera, so I I hope I'm doing that good because I can't actually see what I'm doing there. And then to top coat it, you can just kind of give it a little top coat like that. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap that around real fast. It's dry enough. Just top coat that down. A little bit of Mod Podge underneath there. Just kind of tuck that underneath that slat, just like so. Now at this point, you'll set this aside, let it dry, go all the way around your basket like I have here, and look at how cute these look when they're dry. It's just so fun. Now, any of these baskets, you can find these at yard sales, thrift stores, big box stores, decorative stores, you name it. This is a really fun way to create a personalized look just using napkins. Okay, now let's move on to our wreath design. This was so fun to make. It's very, very simple. I got a ring base um, at the dollar store. It's one of those green 
um, styrofoam wreath bases. And I went ahead and I pre-painted it with Folk Art Home Decor Chalk. So this works as kind of like a primer. I love this because it works on plastic, styrofoam, all sorts of materials like that. You can use it on anything. You can use it on tin, wood, but it works really, really well as a primer. And um, for the wreath, you can see here, we just did that same motif with the carrots. And what I did was, most of these wreaths will have a part where they're seamed together. So I like to you know, treat that as sort of the center of my wreath. And that's where you wanna have your bottom. So your bottom can either be um, right in the middle or if you're gonna do an offset design, like I have here with the carrots, you could move it a little bit over to the side. I should do that this way for you guys. So if you wanted to put a bow in the very center, you would do it that way. Or if you wanted to have an offset design, you could kind of spin it a little bit that way. And that way you just don't, you know, you don't really have to run the risk of having that hump show because you know you're gonna be gluing something over it. And for the wreath, very simple. You're gonna start at that seam. And for this carrot design, I want to go directional, which means I'm going to put one piece down, give it a light mist, very, very light mist. So I'm going to put one piece down going this way. Just barely, barely going to tap down with my brush. Just like so. Wrap it with your finger. Now with the wreaths, you do have to um, sort of do half of it, let it dry for a little bit, and then come in and do the other half because I'm holding it here. So I'll do half of the wreath, let it dry, and then keep going. So it does take a little bit longer than some of your other ones. So remember, this is our starting point. And what I mean by directional is that I want from this side, all the carrots going this way, and from this side, all the carrots going that way. So we know that our starting point is gonna be here. So we'll go ahead and get that down. Grab one more piece of our prepped out carrots, give it a mist. Oops, I got a little bit too much water on that one, guys. I got a little bit too close, but it, it's okay, it'll still work. And now we're gonna overlap those pieces, and that will be the beginning of our wreath and where we want to have our designs. So then from there, you'll just follow along on the wreath. I'm not gonna do the whole wreath because again, it'll take me a while to do that. That's a whole video. <laughs> I'm just sharing five fun ideas today. So we'll have all the further instructions and stuff for you. Let's grab one more piece. Go ahead, give it a light mist and we'll just continue on this side going this direction up and this side going this direction up. I'll put this one last one down and we'll move over and show you how we finished it off. So you'll just keep adding those pieces until the whole ring is filled up, going that way and that way. And so let's take a look at the finished design. I've got a whole bunch of carrots and then you can see some places I've even popped in more, you can add more or less depending upon how much you want to show and also depending upon what your napkin design is. I use some twine, just some very inexpensive fun twine like this, just to wrap around it. You could do ribbon and I added some raffia carrots and little Easter eggs just to finish it off. I think it turned out so cute. I love this, I love this, love this. And that uh, wreath base was only a dollar. So you could really make a lot of these for not very much money. You could even glue um, decorative eggs, things like that, whatever you have even around the house. All right, speaking of eggs, let's dive in and take a look at some of the eggs. These are some eggs that I made a few years ago. I still have them. I pull them out with my Easter stuff. These are all over napkin designs. So this is where we've cut out different motifs and covered the entire egg. And I wanna show you what it looks like if you want that sort of natural look, which I love. We have these paper mache eggs. And you could, if you wanted to paint it and do an all over design so it looks like this, you would pre-paint it with that same Folk Art Home Decor Chalk, and then you would just add your um, cutouts, your napkin cutouts to the egg. Now, if you wanted to create sort of more of an organic, rustic kind of farmhouse look, you might wanna keep your egg that natural color. So I wanna show you what that looks like. 
So let's move those over. And I've got my napkin cut out here. And this part gets a little bit messy. So you're gonna go ahead and add your Mod Podge to your egg. And I like to add it like where you can see the Mod Podge, but it's not too thick. Not too thick, you don't want it to be too runny. So cover it as best you can. This is a pretty large motif. So if you had something smaller, you might work in more little pieces. Spritz it. Let's go ahead and place it onto the egg. And you have to kind of work with your hands to go around those curved surfaces. You are gonna get some wrinkles because you know you are working it on a curved surface. If you wanna go in with your scissors and give it a little slice, you can do that and then kind of fold over. Not too many wrinkles. If you use too much Mod Podge, I find that's when you get more of the wrinkles. So you don't wanna not use enough, but you don't wanna use too much. It shouldn't be dripping off of your egg or your project. So let's go in on this back side here. I'm gonna show you that slice one more time. Just kinda go in between your design and add a few slices. You can sort of feel where it naturally wants to fold over. It's where the curves are happening. And let's add a little bit more. Again, this is our satin Mod Podge formula. And just press down, just like so. So pretty, you can find my dried one. Just a great little cute farmhouse organic. You know, I'm doing these for uh, Easter, but these would be beautiful all spring. You know, you could do, there's lots of napkins out there. I've seen lemon ones and eggplants and all kinds of things. So you could just do all different garden ones. This would be so cute just for kitchen decor also. All right, let's set this aside and dry. All right, all right guys. I know we don't have a whole lot of time today, so let's just keep moving on. Thank you guys again for joining me. We've had so much fun on all of our Make It With Mod Podges. Um, this sign here, so this base I got from the dollar store also, and it came with that bunny cutout. And I just wanted to show you an example of what it looks like to do just a cutout, not an all over design, but just sort of bordering a project. So you can do this on a frame or a mat or a, a piece of art, whatever, but for signs, it's such a great way to add a pop. I did a row at the bottom. Of course, you could do a cluster, whatever you want. And then I just spelled out hop, H-O-P. I used my green full cart paint, which I just took my napkins and I really just matched up my colors to my napkins. I was like, okay, let's try to get the closest to that dark green in there. And for my O, I wanted to use an Easter egg. So hop. Um, for the O, let's talk about that. And I'm gonna show you how we glittered that using our same Mod Podge formula. So for the O, my H and my P were pretty thick letters. So I needed to uh, raise up that shape. So I found these Easter egg cutouts. They were very inexpensive. And I glued them with hot glue, like four of them together, just to create a thicker egg shape. Because I honestly, I just couldn't find any thicker eggs out there in the craft store. So let me go ahead and slice off a bit of this paper. So we're gonna do some glittering. Flip that over, that's a little damp there. So for the glittering, I wanna show you how you glitter that thick edge real fast. So we're gonna pour out some of our glitter. Okay, and we're gonna take, this one is a messy one too. We're gonna take our egg and load up that edge with our Mod Podge. Just load it up. You can be super sloppy here. The glitter is so forgiving. I'm using this chunky glitter. I always call it kid glitter. Uh, I think it has some great coverage. You can use ultra fine glitter. I use ultra fine all the time also. It really just depends upon the look you're going for. Okay, so I've got that whole edge glittered. Now what I wanna do, definitely gonna need a paper towel after this craft, is do my top there. We may end up adding some more to the top. Now you're just gonna take that edge and roll it in that pile of glitter. Just roll that. And you can check it at this point. Check it and look and see, oh, I need a little bit more there. Kind of tap in, just sort of tap in. 
And once it's dry, if you've missed a spot or two, it's no worries. You just go in and add a little drop of Mod Podge and add some more. So that's how you glitter a thick edge like that. Now this is really fun. If you've Mod Podge the design to the top and you just wanna do the edge, that's awesome too. But for this, we wanna go ahead and give it a full coverage. So we'll sprinkle our glitter right on top and then tap off gently, it's still wet. And at this point, you would set this aside and let this dry. That's our little egg shape there. I'm gonna go ahead and slide that up so I don't get glitter on everything else. So you'll just let that dry for a good couple of hours and then you can top coat it. You can add a layer of the Satin Mod Podge if you want. I love top coating with gloss when I'm working with glitter. The gloss formula is the shinier formula and I just feel like it doesn't dull the glitter as much. So um, if you have gloss on hand, you could top coat with uh, gloss. You don't actually need to top coat it, but if you're afraid that the glitter is gonna flake off, go ahead and give it a little seal with the top coat. Okay, uh, let's talk about some glittery formulas of Mod Podge. I've got two on hand that I wanna show you. I've got Mod Podge Mega Glitter and I've got Mod Podge Sparkle. And I apologize for my <laughs> bottles. They are looking kind of sad. I think I need to get new ones, but you can see how much I love this. Um, Mega Glitter comes in silver, hologram, which is like Aurora Borealis, I'm gonna show you today, and it comes in gold. These eggs were done with gold. So I just wanna show you what that gold looks like. It's very beautiful, almost looks like gold leafing. So that's just the Mod Podge with a little bit of gold folk art paint underneath it. So I have a paper mache bunny like this, and we went ahead and we painted it white. You could use the chalk paint or folk art uh, multi-surface, either way, and I hope you can see the shine and the shimmer and all that beautiful glitter in the rabbit, okay? It's hard, I don't know on camera if it really shows up, but in real life, this thing is so sparkly and there's no flake. So it's not like coated in glitter, it's just done with the Mod Podge Mega Glitter. So if you wanted a very fine sparkle, you would use Sparkle. Sparkle has just all the same size of glitter in it. Mega Glitter has all different sizes of glitter. So you've got little glitter and big chunkier glitter. And that's what's creating that whole, you know, big kicks of colors coming through there. So for that, it's really so easy. I've got my Mega Glitter here. Oh, I should tell you what I do with Mega Glitter. I don't like to shake my Mod Podge because I don't like to create extra air bubbles, but I just roll it around like so. And that just helps kind of mix it up. If I just used this, so I know it's pretty mixed up, you could also use a skewer or a popsicle stick or something like that to stir it. Mega Glitter is very thick. It's a thicker formula. That's how much glitter is in there, so it's not even dripping off of my brush. Then you just go right into your project and you paint it. And this one with all that sparkle is just one coat. So I'll probably have to finish this off and put two coats on it now <laughs> or else it'll be really sparkly in one spot. But that's what you do. You just brush it over your paint. Now for the white, you're really just getting that glittery color coming through. But the way this works is it's a clear base and that's Aurora Borealis glitter on there. So it's gonna pick up the colors of anything that's under it. So if I painted this rabbit pink, it would still show pink, but with those hues of the rainbow all popping through. So pretty. All right, guys, that's five quick designs for your Easter decor using our glitter formulas and our satin Mod Podge. I hope you've enjoyed these quick tips and ideas for crafting for your spring decor. We'll be back here on Thursdays at Facebook, Saturdays on YouTubes. We'll see you next week. Happy spring.